So, just as a little reminder, the actor playing Paul Rand here is sadly the gentleman who passed away back in 2017. Um, not, which was, of course, not long after this game came out. So just keep that in mind. Rest in peace to this actor. How well did you know Kate? Hardly knew her at all. I met her a few times. But the cause, that's about all. So when was the last time you saw her? Last uh, Friday. I just popped out of the course and... Uh, about seven. Did you speak to her then? It's possible. And how did she seem? Was she happy, sad, preoccupied? She was drunk. Do you know if Kate had lost this? It's her driving licence. How would I know that? You didn't see it lying around anywhere? No. So this was actually, because I'm actually double-checking his uh, IMDb, this was actually the last role he had in his career. Um, it wasn't like one of his only things. Believe it or not, it looks like he... Oh, I knew that's where I heard his voice before. Because I was listening to him thinking, I've heard this voice before. Where have I heard this voice before? Paul Darrow... <laughs> it looks like he actually has some ties to Doctor Who, in case you're wondering about the Doctor Who ties to this. Um, if we go back all the way to the beginning of his IM, uh, IMDb, um, he was in some TV series back in the day, such as The Odd Man, Emergency Ward 10, The Saint, The Newcomers, Mr. Jericho, Manhunt, Long Ago Tomorrow, The Rivals of Sherlock Holmes, the Flaxton Boys, Churchill's People, Within These Walls, The Poisoning of Charles Bravo, The Legend of Robin Hood, a miniseries. He was the sheriff of Nottingham in that. The Hammer House of Horror, Blake Seven. And he was in, from 1970 to 1985, he was in eight episodes of Doctor Who. He was Captain Hawkins and Tecker. So for those of you more familiar with Doctor Who than I am, there you go. But here is, because uh, I'm looking at the rest of this, Imperium Galactica 2, Hostile Waters. He was in Die Another Day. He was, he was a, a doctor in Die Another Day. Days That Shook the World. He was in Doctor Who, The Monthly Adventures, a voice called Guidance. He was in, oh my gosh, in Star Wars Empire at War, he was Grand Moff Tarkin. He was in H.P. Lovecraft Volume 2, The Dreams of Cthulhu. But here's the other voice I definitely know him from. He was Overseer Tremel in Star Wars The Old Republic. That's where I knew his voice from. Because I remember, I was just like, I know I've heard this voice before. And I'm I'm picturing Tremel from the Sith Warrior starting zone in my head right now. And I am absolutely hearing that same voice. Did you know anything about Simon Thompson's bike? No. <laughs> Ever tried Simon's homebrew? Simon Thompson? No, I haven't. I wouldn't touch anything that has had Simon's fingers in it. That's going to be a fun little uh, trivia that I share with people uh, if when they ask, well, where do I know him from? And I, I could say Doctor Who, but if I mentioned uh, to some of my other friends who have played Star Wars Republic, like, oh, he was Overseer Tremel in the Sith Warrior starting zone, they'll be like, oh, that's who he is. Have you seen this before? Looks familiar. Where did you find it? It was uh, in the woods. Presumably it had something to do with Kate or her killer. Well, that's what I'm trying to establish. Shouldn't it be in an evidence bag, Inspector, in case of contamination? I didn't have one with me, unfortunately. Well, don't go testing it for DNA, will you? 
It's got yours all over it. What do you know about this? It's a freedom necklace. It's a symbol we use um, sometimes on the course. Little bird in cage flying away. Um, freeing themselves from their past is the analogy. So do they get them when they join the course or something? No, 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 not as a rule. I think I bought one once as a present. Oh, not uh, for Kate, by any chance? <laughs> no, not for Kate. I can't really remember who it was for, a birthday present maybe for one of the students. Which student? I have no idea. Mm-hmm. What do you know about this? Looks like a mask. You don't recognise it? Not particularly. Looks like a monarch mask. What's a monarch mask? Monarch is a fancy dress. Outfitters. Ryan goes there sometimes. What did you hear about an argument in the pub last Friday? I didn't go to the pub last Friday. You didn't hear anything about an argument in the pub? Should I have? No, that's fine. Could you tell me a bit about this? Had it designed by an agency. Hmm. And when was that? Last year. Is that when you started the business? Yes, I suppose so. Have you ever seen one of these before? I believe it's a scrying mirror, pagan thing. Ever used one? Why would I use a scrying mirror? So you have no interest at all in this sort of thing? No. Does the Atlas course use them at all? Well, not at all. Strange question. Knowing now that he's Overseer Tremel, that just makes me all the happier that I do know this gentleman from something other than this one game. As I will admit, I am someone that has not really watched uh, barely any of, of uh, Doctor Who. I just never got into it. Know what this is, by any chance? I have no idea. Gardening isn't my kind of thing. Rebecca would probably know. I presume you've met Rebecca. Yes, I am. I'm sure she'd enjoy telling you what it is. She's the kind of woman who likes to feel superior. Would probably marry a millionaire and then decide to run her own pub. Yes, why was that? Well, she isn't exactly housewife material. She likes to be in control, like Maya. Shame, isn't it, that I'm in control of both of them? Wow. Certainly a uh, power move on his part there, making it clear who's really in charge around here. Have you ever heard of Salvia Divinorum or Magic Mint? Sounds like it might be a drug. It's a hallucinogenic plant. Legal, as a matter of fact. I'm not a drug... Taker, Inspector. I have no enthusiasm for voluntarily poisoning your brain. And you've never seen anyone on the course taking it? Well, if someone had, they wouldn't have done it openly. We don't allow drugs or alcohol on our course. We like to tell the students that success is the best drug. Whether you buy into that, of course, is another matter. How well did you know Liam? Liam who? Liam, who took his life. Oh. Well, as far as I remember, he was a good student, confident, outgoing. You didn't notice any problems? I believe he had problems at home. Were you there when he died? Yes. And afterwards? You didn't see him after the meeting? No. What was Liam like that night? No. Apart from being drunk, or possibly because of that, he seemed perfectly happy. He was drunk? Well, I assume the bottle in his hand contained whiskey and not lemonade. Lots of similarities to Kate, don't you think? Drinking, depression, is that normal for the students? People come into the Atlas course for quick solutions to their problems. And when they don't get them as quickly as they might have liked, 
sometimes their impatience gets the better of them. All right, before we continue... Did he not just say they don't allow alcohol on the site? Aha! So if you don't allow drink or drugs onto the site, why did you allow Liam to drink whiskey all night? Well, we did give him various warnings. Did try to stop him, but uh, didn't work. But you let him stay on the course? Yeah, well, we couldn't throw him out. This isn't a primary school, Inspector. We're not the police. We can't enforce these rules. If they pay their fees, they're entitled to stay on the course. And what if they want to take drugs? As long as they do it with discretion, frankly, I don't care if they want to wipe or inject paint stripper all over their faces. Do you store any alcohol at Atlas? No. Is there a kitchen? Why, do you want to go down there and check? Well, obviously you wouldn't mind if what you're saying is true. Of course I wouldn't mind. It's past the lavatories down the corridor, but you won't find any drugs in there or alcohol. Whether I find alcohol at Atlas or not, it probably isn't particularly relevant. But it's worth a look anyway. And we'll check later, but for now... What do you know about this? So you've been graced with Goebbels' company already, have you? James, our local minister for propaganda. I suppose Ryan already told you about our actual previous incarnation. He explained, yes. Did he tell you anything scandalous? Not unless you count the suicide. Well, these things happen. Was it your idea? The suicide? Third eye... Yeah, I suppose it was. Yeah. As my son had started to atrophy, I decided I ought to give him something to do. And Third Eye was the same as Atlas, teaching business skills. Very similar. So Liam's death didn't prompt you to make any changes? There was nothing we could do about Liam's death, Inspector, any more than we could do anything about Kate's. It was out of our control. You can't blame me for wondering, Paul. Two student deaths in two years... It's called a coincidence, Inspector. I expect they had fast food also. But you're not investigating all the local chippies, are you? And then Jinx goes, Well, as a matter of fact, I'm actually going to be going there just after this. If I did this, would it mean anything to you? I presume you've seen an Atlas student doing that. Ah, so this is an Atlas thing. Well, it wasn't exactly our idea. The students started doing it spontaneously to show commitment to the cause. Cute, really. Which student did you see doing that? I'm not sure, but he was carving it into a tree. I told him to stop. Did you really? Why? Defacing public property. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. What's the punishment for that kind of thing nowadays? Prison sentence? Oh, it's usually a fine. All right. What about defiling public liberty? Does that carry a fine too? Oddly enough, the student in question argued a similar point. Is that something you encourage on the Atlas course? We encourage people who put ideas first and moral anachronisms second. The problem with the law, Inspector is that it's out of date. Well, I suppose that's a matter of opinion. However, you still respect it. Respect it? I abide by it. We all play by the book, Inspector, but that's only because of the threat of possible incarceration. Believe it or not, I'm not gonna, dis I'm not gonna disagree with him about the part about it being out of date. I'm specifically referring to other certain laws like free use and copyright laws, specifically. Can you tell me a little about the Atlas phrase, free to be free? Where did you hear that? I was talking to one of your students. It's a little phrase we conjured up to summarize our objectives. What 
is your objective, if you don't mind me asking? Mine? Or do you mean the course's objective? On the course. The objective of the course is to free people from bondage. We teach that most people are crippled by their past, by guilt, their attitudes, their beliefs. All that kind of nonsense. Guilt cripples people. Feeling guilty in business is like a meat eater feeling guilty in an abattoir. Guilt comes from the archaic emotional centers of the brain. It's a vestige of our animal ancestry, that's all. In business, you heed it at your peril. I'm sorry, Inspector, my house appears to be haunted. Would you mind closing the door? So, you believe that guilt has no place in business? None at all. I have few beliefs, Inspector, but that's one of them. And what if you have done something wrong? <laughs> well, that's the whole point. Guilt has nothing to do with it. Hmm. Interesting opinion. I like how Jenks just was not even bothered about the, oh, I'm sorry, it appears my house is haunted. He just closed the door and just goes right back to it, just like, yeah, haunted, whatever. So anyways. <laughs> uh, that's all for the moment. Thank you. So now, if we want to go back and have a chat with Mr... I might be seeing a lot of Paul tonight. Yeah, with Mr. Paul Darrow, we'll just go across the Brandon house. Now, hold on a second. What about behind the Brandon house? What's over here? Hmm, a car and a garage. Well, let's go check in with James real quick. Ask you a couple more things, please. If I did that, would it mean anything to you? Yeah, it's a Satanism symbol. Satanists use it. Have you ever seen anyone using it? Lots of people. Politicians, presidents, CEOs. Have you ever seen anyone local using it? Not that I remember. Ever hear the phrase, free to be free? Heard anyone use that? Nah. What is it, a song? No, I don't think so. Doesn't matter. Be back later on, if that's okay. So we'll just go along and talk to everybody on our way back to Atlas, where we will go check out that kitchen. few more questions, if you don't mind. If I did this, would that mean anything to you? Why, is it meant to mean something? No, no, it's okay. Ever heard the phrase, free to be free? Do you mean the Atlas thing? Yes, I have. Know what it means? It means being free of guilt. What do you think about that? You mean, do I think it's a bad thing? Do you? I mean, surely if you have done something wrong... Oh, but that's the point, Inspector. Most people spend their time feeling guilty over nothing, and that's not a good thing. OK, that's it for now. Thank you. Huh. Chrome extension, interesting. I find it funny it's saying that when I'm using Steam. Ask about a few more things, please. If I did this, would it mean anything to you? No. Why? It's okay. Thanks. Do you know the phrase, free to be free? Yeah. It's an Atlas thing. I first heard it when I went with Simon. What did they say about it? They said that you shouldn't feel guilty if you do something wrong. I don't agree with that. No? No. No, I think you should feel guilty if you do something wrong. What did uh, Simon think? I don't know, but I don't think he agreed with that either. Thank you. Probably be back later.
And now we'll go check this kitchen. So the kitchen must be down the corridor there, if what Paul said is true. Interesting. Well, there's a TV right there with a DVD player. I don't think anyone will mind if I have a quick look at this. Oh my. Oh, there's a DVD on the pot from the pile here. Let's let's take a look at that first, shall we? We get to see Ryan in all of his speaker glory. Please, please, simmer down. Freedom, true freedom, means freedom from many vices that society had traditionally believed to be virtues. Self-criticism, self-doubt, guilt. Ladies and gentlemen, these are not virtues. These are sins. Born of a fake morality implanted deep within our minds and collective consciousness by governments and religions through the ages with the sole purpose of preventing the masses, stopping us from achieving the same success, happiness and freedom enjoyed by those at the very pinnacle of society. I'm going to show you that common morality is nothing more than the cynical creation of an elite desperate to stay in power. An elite hell-bent on preventing you from reaching your full potential by making you feel guilty for pursuing success. But the good news is that you can take back control. You can become the success you deserve to be. Atlas will give you a unique and powerful advantage. Life in all its technicolor glory can be yours. All that you have to do is to stay, embrace it, enjoy it, and learn to love your ambition. Welcome to Atlas. Oh yeah, not a cult whatsoever. Not a single sign that there could be any kind of cult-like vibes from this place at all. Now about this. Well, that was odd. Looked like someone pickpocketing, but why make a video of it? Indeed. And it was rather crudely shot. What do you say we uh, hop on over to the lounge and ask Ryan about it? Hmm. He's not in the lounge? Could he be in the reading room? Let yourself go. Feel your soul. Lifting. Then wait. For the moment to break free. Then. 
Excellent, Hannah. Well, could you come back later, please? What's going on here? Please, leave. Sorry, Ryan, right. there's a few more questions I have to ask you yet, and uh, time's ticking by. Note Kyle over there. What on earth was that about? It looked like they were burning woolen dolls. A woolen doll burning ceremony. What a very odd course this is. Indeed. Again, no cult vibes from this place whatsoever. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways. Yeah! Woo. I like how, <laughs> one, he was like, well, what's happening here? They all lifted and looked at him like, oh, can you please leave and get out of here? Like, all of them did that. Like, they were just, like, so, like, upset he interrupted. So, uh, yeah, we can't talk to Ryan about this yet. So, um... What do you say we, uh... Oh. Hello. Hmm. Interesting. Huh. Well... Perhaps for one of these here? So, those are Ryan's guitars, kept in a garage. Not really the best place to keep them. A collection of guitars. Interesting. Hmm. Let's go talk to Simon and Emma. Couple more questions, if that's okay. Have you seen this before? No. No, oh, sorry. What do you know about doll burning? Not on the course. It's a ritual thing. It's uh, and getting rid of things that you don't need. Throw it into the fire. And that's a good thing? Well, yeah, it helps you getting rid of things you don't need. So you can move on and take control again. So what are the masks for? They're just to help you get into the right frame of mind. Uh, just get you into the zone, you know, help with the trance. A trance? Yeah, yeah. It's like... Um, it's like self-hypnosis. We do it on the course sometimes. It's just to help you get into the right frame of mind, you know? So you hypnotise yourself. How do you do that? Just stare into a mirror and chant something, you know, just say the same thing over and over again. Or you could just close your eyes and put yourself into a trance. Some people can do that. And that's safe? Well, yeah. Hypnosis doesn't work the way that most people think it does. You can't just be hypnotised if you don't want to be hypnotised. But you can learn to hypnotise yourself. What did you say it was called? Auto-hypnosis? Self-hypnosis, auto-hypnosis, same thing really. I think Simon was a bit too quick to play down the role of auto-hypnosis on the course. I'll have to uh, ask around about this. Hmm. What do you know about Ryan's guitar collection? Uh, not a whole lot. I know he brought a guitar to one of the groups once, at the end of one of the stages. That's the only time I've seen him with a guitar. Thank you. Probably be back later. Have you seen this before? No. Don't think so. What do you know about doll burning? Burning. I think it was something that they did on the course. Simon mentioned it. No, they didn't do that when you were there? No. What 
What do you know about Ryan's guitar collection? I know he plays because he tried to buy one off me. Do you play? I used to. I used to be in a band, but I was a singer as well, so I got away with it. Singer as well? Yeah, I used to sing in a band every night. But uh, sometimes it was in a pub, but usually at Rebecca's. What was that called? It was called Blackstone. And uh, this guy from a record company once came to see us, and he said the band was rubbish, but that I was good. So after that, I don't think they liked me much, and then we broke up after college. Can't hide talent. Do you know what auto-hypnosis is? Um, it's some type of self-hypnosis, isn't it? Yeah. Have you ever tried it? No, I haven't. But I think Kate was into it. She learned it from when she went to Atlas. And what did she tell you about it? Um, not a, not a lot, really. I think it helped her. I think she used it as a sort of self-meditation. So, I mentioned how you can get information from other characters, which you can then use on other characters to, con to spot contradictions. Rebecca told us that Liam was in a band called Blackstone. That is what the information we need to know here. Because she used to sing with... Blackstone, and yet she said she didn't know Liam very well. Aha. Uh -huh. That band you sang in, Blackstone, who else was in the band? Um, just a few people from college. Including Liam? Yeah. Why did you say you didn't know him? No, it's, it's not that. I just thought you meant that I didn't know about his suicide. Did you? No, I was... <clears throat> Away on holiday. When he died? Yeah, I only knew him through the band. She definitely knows more than she's saying. She was in a band with Liam, but didn't know about his problem? I'm not sure I believe you, Emma. That's all for the moment. Thank you. So, we'll just go ahead and move on. Speak to our other folks that we need to speak to. A few more questions, please. Do you know anything about this? No, sorry. Ask Ryan. What do you know about doll burning at Atlas? Only that it's part of the course, I... I'm not entirely sure what they're for, but I made dozens for him. You made them? Oh, Ryan can't make anything. He's practically dyspraxic. Does Ryan play the guitar? <laughs> he tries. He does keep wasting money on them, though. I think he believes if he buys the right one, he'll suddenly turn into Jimi Hendrix. It's sad, really. I just... Let him play in his room. As long as he plays in there, I don't mind. Do you know anything about hypnosis used on the Atlas course? Are you sure you mean hypnosis or the power of persuasion? What's the difference? Not a lot. But if you want someone to do something, it's usually easier to ask nicely. Atlas used persuasion techniques. Well, don't all businesses use it, Inspector? Ever heard of advertising? I mean, she's not wrong. Be back later on, if that's okay. Let's go to James next. And then we'll go to Paul. I'll ask you a couple more things, please. Seen this before? No, what is it? Do you recognize it? No. Should I? What do you know about doll burning? Doll burning? What sort of doll burning? It doesn't mean anything to you. No. Should it? No, that's okay. Ever heard of auto-hypnosis, James? 
self-hypnosis. Yeah. And what do you know about it? It's another name for scrying. Some people call it auto-hypnosis, I call it scrying. Right. So you're saying scrying is just self-hypnosis? Scrying? You can scry on anything. I don't use a mirror. I can scry watching the clouds. Maybe the water on a lake in the moonlight. And when you're watching the water, what happens? Do you go into a trance? You lose yourself in your unconscious. You go deeper and deeper. You swim around. Try not to go too deep. Because if you go too deep, you start drowning. And you get dragged down to the bottom. As long as you stay swimming, you come to the surface again. Then you wake up and see the world as it really is. It's like a journey to a place people talk about, but no one's ever seen. You're thinking about Kate, aren't you? What makes you say that? She bought a mirror. Sold her one last year. Was she into using mirrors like that? No idea. But she bought one. Right. Again, the music just loved to play up on the whole, ah, uh, we're teasing something supernatural. Let me be back later. <laughs> now let's go speak to Paul. A few more questions, if you don't mind. Seen this before? The writing looks familiar, but no. What can you tell me about doll burning at Atlas? Not very much. It's one of Ryan's ideas. My son is under the illusion that he's a genius. Does um, Ryan play the guitar? Ryan? Ryan couldn't get a tune out of a radio. He's tone deaf. OK, so he's never tried to go professional. If he did try, it was never going to happen. Can you tell me more about the auto-hypnosis techniques used on the course? We don't use hypnosis on the course. Not at all? Not anymore. So, how was it used? Hypnosis is probably the wrong word, Inspector. It's nothing to do with the trances or things like that. It was uh, it was meant to force... <coughs> to help students. Did you force them? You can't force anybody into being hypnotised. You have to want to be hypnotised. It's not something out of your control. You can't be hurt or damaged in any way by hypnosis. So you've never put pressure on students to enter into hypnosis? It would be impossible to do so. Really? Uh, that's it for the time being. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we should give the chief a call. Apparently, the chief doesn't want to answer. Well, I did ask Paul about the DVD. Hmm. Maybe we should, uh, head on back to Atlas, but let's go through the woods. See if there's anything else we can encounter while we're here. Whoa! Oh, gosh! DVD! That's all they took. It must have been deliberate. Someone clearly wanted that back. Nice and helpful of them to leave a piece of evidence behind, though. My goodness! Police inspector just got straight up mugged!
A uh, few more Mark questions. Costumes. Don't mind. Hmm. Didn't wasn't Paul the one who actually told us about this place? Monarch costumes. Well, then, let's go ahead and ask him about it. Have you seen this before? No, I don't think so. You don't recognise the shop? No. Is there someone else who works at Atlas? Someone who may have been there tonight? No. There's a cleaner. Comes at strange times, but then... He's a strange boy. Work experience. As a cleaner? Well, we did try him in accounts, but it didn't work out. Ha. Huh. Well, we got him. Aha. Do you visit Monarch Costumes a lot? No. I used to go in there occasionally. Why? But you do know the shop. Yes, of course I do. You see, Paul, I thought you said you didn't know where this bag was from. Well, maybe I do. This was used to put over my head, Paul, by a mugger. Would you like to tell me something? Are you suggesting that I had something to do with your mugging? Did you? You really ask the most ridiculous questions. Of course I didn't. So why did you lie about the shop? Well, uh, I didn't have anything to do with your mugging, Inspector, but I might know somebody who did. Go on. Did Ryan mention Jason to you, the cleaner? Unfortunately, Ryan, at some point, told Jason that the DVD mustn't be removed from the site. So, when he saw you take it, he simply thought that he was doing us a favour by uh, well, getting it back. He isn't exactly what you'd call one of Darwin's best examples. So what's on the DVD that's so special? All right, it was something I did myself, a little stunt I pulled to amuse the students. What kind of stunt? I pretended to steal from the students. I emphasized the word pretended. The students knew all about it afterwards. Everything was above board. Steal from students? Why? We were doing a piece about pushing the limit, so I decided I, I would show them how it was done. Oh, don't look so serious, Inspector. I returned everybody's things immediately afterwards. No harm done. And when was this? Last year sometime. At Third Eye or Atlas? Third Eye, I think. And this was before or after Liam died? Well, since you'll probably find out anyway, it happened to be on the night that Liam died, as it happens. Before you ask. No. I didn't steal from him. Do you think it's a good idea to encourage students to steal, Paul? I wasn't encouraging students to steal. Policemen are so literal. Life is shades of grey, Inspector. Much as the force might like it, it doesn't divide neatly into blacks and whites. Now, if you don't mind, you're going to have to excuse me for a moment. You know where the door is. Considering that we know he was a Sith Lord in Star Wars The Old Republic, I'm tickled by him saying the Force. He was quick enough to claim he didn't steal from Liam. What kind of stunt was that anyway? And Liam dying later the same night? It's just all a bit too suspicious. So I just thought that was rather amusing that he said that the Force, considering that he was a Sith Lord couple more questions if that's okay. So this is yet another thing I mentioned about the using information from another character to get someone else because we just learned that this was on the same night that Liam died as in Liam was there. Do you uh, know the shop? Have you used it? No but I know where it is. What do you know about Paul Rand? Paul the Slime. You've obviously met him then? <sighs> yes, I have. What do you know about him committing a fake theft during one of the courses? What, about him going through people's bags? Yeah, he tried that thing on me as well, weirdo. So you were at Third Eye? Yes. Yes, I, I went there for a few months after college and I left because I hated it. And I didn't know Atlas was the same thing. And I went with Simon. Does Simon know that? 
No. I didn't want to burst his bubble, so I didn't say anything. So he doesn't know you went to Third Eye? No. Ah! So is that where you met Ryan as well? Yep. Right! What, uh, what didn't you like about the course? Well, it was just... It was stupid. They just made you do things to other people and be abusive just to prove that you could, and I absolutely hated it. What sort of things? Oh, just stupid things. Nasty things to prove that you could do it. It was about not feeling guilty. And it was horrible. That's why I left. And is Simon doing all of this stuff now? No. No. I, I think they had to stop because it was just getting ridiculous. I think somebody got arrested or something. Very interesting. So. Was at Third Eye when Paul pulled the stunt. Was on holiday the night Liam died. Aha. Uh -huh. So, you witnessed Paul's money-stealing stunt, is that right? Yes. But you weren't there when Liam died? No. Don't quite understand that, you see, because Paul pulled the stunt on the same night. Liam died later that evening. Um, I, uh, I must have got mixed up. So you don't know anything about Liam's death, even though you were there on that night? No. Emma. I think you better explain, don't you? Well, it was the stupid course, wasn't it? Go on. Well, we were all told to do stupid things and... And then that thieving thing happened and so... Take a breath, Emma. And Liam killed himself because of me. Why? Um... Liam had a... A birthmark on the side of his face. And no one would mention anything, even though we all knew it was there. And we all thought, they all thought it was ugly. So I thought I'd say something and I... I even asked Paul if it was okay to say it. And what did he say? He said he wouldn't mind. Then Liam killed himself. Liam's dead because of me. Well, Emma, I'm quite sure you regret what you said, but I really don't think you caused Liam's death. There's always more to these things than meets the eye. It wasn't your fault. We can't tell Simon, please. Simon doesn't need to know. Don't worry. Thank you. I suppose it's possible that what she said led to Liam's death, but I really doubt it. I blame the Rands before I blame her. So, yeah. Imagine carrying the guilt of feeling like you were the one responsible for someone committing suicide. You saw her reaction, right? Can you imagine how much she's had to keep that to herself and keep that bottled up, those emotions? And why she is so against the idea of feeling, of uh, not feeling guilty about things? I mean, how would you feel in Emma's position if you felt that something you did caused someone to kill themselves? This is why I get so upset and against people in the gaming communities, um, Overwatch included, because I experience it a lot in Overwatch, by those who tell other, tell other people to kill themselves. Usually when you see someone type KYS, that literally means kill yourself. And I just get so bothered by that, that we are at a point now in our culture and society where we can just so casually tell somebody else to go kill themselves. And yet, they never seem to take a moment to think about what ha would happen if they actually did. Would you feel the way Emma feels about Liam? 
Now, whether or not she actually was the reason he, he killed himself? Like Jenk said, we'd probably put more of the blame on the Rands before we blame Emma for that. But just the fact that she feels sad and even guilty about that just shows that, uh, well, at least she's not... She's someone who didn't fall into the deep end like, say, Kyle or even Simon. Because Simon's kind of buying into it. Not entirely like Kyle, but he might be getting there. And, of course, Emma had that own previous experience with it, so, of course, you know. <sighs> poor Emma. And poor Liam. We will continue with our investigation now in the new hour of 9 o'clock when we return. Stay tuned. <laughs> 